Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not from there either, so. <laughs> Iowa, then. Yeah. Right too. Yes. Uh, Coach had mentioned after the game that he told you to be aggressive on that 95-yard drive that you guys had. What, what was kind of the mindset going into well, that last drive? Honestly, uh, the biggest issue was just we, we needed to go get points on the board because obviously it was a game that either team could win. Um, really felt like we, if we needed to have a, a little bit more quarterback run, then that's what we needed to do. And obviously the huge play in that drive was, uh, well, a couple of them, but the first one was a 61-yarder by uh, – Skyler off a quarterback draw and then you know him being aggressive on the fourth down play because um, obviously it was a run or pass situation there where where he could throw it but you know when he decided to go get the first down he did a great job. He has been so good with uh, time of possession given Oklahoma's explosive capacities how important is it to have it's, the ball? It's big it's big obviously two things need to happen for from our standpoint we need to score points because um, they're gonna they're gonna figure out how to score some points um, but then we need to keep the ball away from their offense. So if that means getting you know, some 8, 10, 12 play drives, that'd be phenomenal. Um, but then we need to finish those drives. How do you balance using Skyler's ability as a runner with you know, keeping it healthy and not carrying yeah. 15, 20 times? Well, it, generally speaking, you know, we feel like if we can make it so third downs and any time we get down in the red zone that, that he's a legitimate threat, that's what we want to do. Um, but last week, as an example, as it came down to the end there, it was like all, ha all hands on deck, and, and he needed to go be a runner as well. The play right before that, uh, uh, Joaquin in the flats, if mm -hmm. he doesn't fall down, how many yards do you think he gets there? <laughs> you know, you, you never know. You, you, you don't ever know. But you felt like uh, he's out in space. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, go, go make a play. So, um, but, but, you you, you know. You feel like it's a good situation. I mean, how, how tough is it to, to manage? I know Coach Malik was kind of on like a snap count. You couldn't use him the entire game. How difficult is it to manage you that? You know, it's tough. And there were some times where you'd say, hey, you can't only put him in there when it's third down or you can't only put him in there when you're going to throw the football because obviously that becomes a huge tendency or everybody knows uh, what's happening. And all of a sudden you start getting blitzed when maybe you wouldn't. Um, but, you know, you're trying to use, get the most out of each guy, but yet understand what their issues are. And, and using Malik as the example, uh, you know, we need him because he's an explosive guy that can make big plays for us. But we also need him for the long run. We need him for, you know, seven, eight games rather than for, for one game. How do you size up this <coughs> offensive line against their defensive line and what needs to happen? Well, you know, they're obviously very, very, very talented up front. Um, you know, they, they are, they have quick twitch. They slant and angle a bunch. Um, it goes back to us, though, really being good at communicating, us being on the same page. Um, that's one thing I do feel like our offensive line does a good job with, and that's co talking and communicating and being on the same page. Now, that being said, you also have to be physical. and we we got to move the line of scrimmage a little bit. Um, they've got to do a good job matching up when they are put one-on-one, -on -one, um, and, and I think we'll do that. Do you have any updates on the health of either Philip Brooks or Jordan Brown um, in the last few days? You know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, we need Philip to, to be able to come and bring it because two weeks ago I really felt like he was starting to, you know, show up a little bit more. And, and that's, I shouldn't may say two weeks ago. There's games this year where you feel like, man, he's close to breaking out and really being a threat. Um, hopefully we can use him more this week. Um, and then Jordan Brown, you know, as soon as we get an all-clear I anticipate him playing, you know, as much as he played uh, when, uh, in the start. Meaning him rotating through, him having his packages, him being able to be the guy that we feel like he is. Um, you know, it's just getting him so he's cleared, and then and then we'll roll him. Do you think Malik will be good to go the whole game this time? Um, you know, his will be more. How does he feel? Um, and and from what I understand, uh, you know, uh, the medically his. You know, his is going to be. How does he feel? How does what can he get done? How how many plays can he play? So, you know, you're a little bit on a pitch count, but you're also on where are you at right now before a series, uh, after a series, making sure that Coach Ray and him are on the same page. Roughly, roughly, where would Kenneth Murray rank amongst you know defenders you've played against this year? Oh well, explosiveness, uh, ability to go sideline to sideline, uh, show up on any given play, be it a run or a pass. Uh, you know he's as good as there is out there, and and obviously he's a guy you, you got to know where he's at and and make sure you're ready to take care of him or or try to do the best you can to slow him down. Do you, do you anticipate using the uh, tight end the pass game? They need forward? to be. Uh, we, we we still need to continue to try to get uh, all of those guys. Obviously, Nick and and Sammy uh, uh, more so a little bit, just because their ability to run down the field a little bit more. But but we need to keep using the tight ends and make people defend them.
as a play caller, when you go up against an offense that can score like Oklahoma, do you <coughs> call the game any differently, knowing that there might be some more pressure on you? Um, you know, if you're not careful, you do. I think we still have to stay within what we what we are and what we want to be. Um, obviously, if they're scoring a ton, then you got to go out and try to put some more points on the board. But from a team concept, our biggest deal is score when we get opportunity and keep the ball away from the other guys. And, and that's what our mindset needs to be. I, you know, I don't want to put ourselves in a bunch of third and long because, because we're trying to throw the football or run play action passes that put us in, in bad situations. How encouraging was it for you to see Waikeen have the game that he had last week? You know, I think all the time from, from the get-go, he's been a guy that has shown he can be an impactful guy. And, and we've got to try to keep getting more and more out of him. Was it a relief to finally get some big plays back last week? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's uh, you know, as the year goes, you, you keep trying to find where's the best one-on-one -on -one matchup, where's the best uh, where we can make somebody, you know, exploit somebody else and make a big play, and and we've got to keep trying to not really manufacture, but put those guys in the best position to make big plays. That's why, you know, obviously Malik and Jordan are two guys that we feel like can can create matchup issues. So we need those guys back and healthy. Great. Thanks so much. Thank right. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.